Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what our prompt is for next week. Um, but I don't want to alarm you. Okay. It says, although the New England and the Chesapeake region were both largely settled by people of English origin. Is that a correct statement? They were settled by English people. Yes, yes. right? Because Am I looking at the middle? It says, by the 1700s, these regions had to evolved into two distinct societies. Why did this difference in development occur? And so we are going to look at that. But one of the things, if you were to see this on AP, I would immediately tell you to write down everything you know about outside information. But you don't have to worry about that because today, what did y'all pick up up front? Did y'all pick up a sheet? I don't have one. Y'all picked up a, a little chart, right? Did every one of y'all pick up this today? This little chart? <coughs> We're gonna look at that today. So, this is what I would suggest for you to do, is write down everything you know, okay? And so, I've already done that step. And what I want us to do is that this is a comparison essay. It wants us to compare the New England to the Chesapeake. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this outside information and determine what is New England and what is Chesapeake. Do you all remember our New England colonies? No? Some of you? Any of you? Oh, we're like, oh, what's this? Okay, so I handed you this map. All right? What I want us to do is I want us to make sure we know what colonies go in what respective region. Because sometimes I have people who write their essay and they write it all about the middle colonies <coughs> and what they have gotten credit. So I'm going to tell you five ways to remember, not five ways, three ways to remember what our colonies are. So do y'all see the southern ones, right? It has a little key. For me to know my southern ones, I know that there's five southern ones and I count from the bottom up five and I'll know. So what's my bottom colony? Georgia. We talked about this as being a safe haven for those debtors, and we talked about it being a buffer because Florida, those people were attacking what colony right here? South Carolina. Did South Carolina like its northern part? No. And so they divided. Where did all these North Carolinians come from? Virginia. And then this last little one, it's really, really like a sliver. I'm just coloring it in so you can see it. Y'all see this one here? Mm -hmm. This one was set up for religious freedom for what group of people? Catholics. This is Maryland. So I remember my southern colonies, and I count from the bottom up. I count from Georgia, and then it's South Carolina, then North Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland. All right, now the question lies, what are my Chesapeake? And my Chesapeake are, my Chesapeake colonies are the ones that surround the Chesapeake Bay. So this is the Chesapeake Bay right here. So what are my Chesapeake colonies? What are my Chesapeake colonies? They surround the Chesapeake Bay. Virginia. Virginia is one of them. And what's the other? Maryland. So I'm just going to make diagonal lines because these colonies right here are my Chesapeake colonies. So the Chesapeake colonies are Maryland and Virginia. So on this essay, can I talk about Georgia? No. Can I talk about South Carolina? No, it's going to be entirely left. So for me to know my southern colonies, I count from the bottom up. And then for my middle colonies, I tell myself there are two big ones and two small ones. So what do you think are my two big ones? Oh, no. Good morning. What do I do? I count from where? Bottom up. And 
So in the future, if you ever see an easy quiz, you're just going to have to be able to list them, not identify where they are. So what are my southern ones? Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and Maryland. If you get a bonus that says, what are the Chesapeake? Which are my two Chesapeake? Okay, so then I go to the middle, and I tell myself, too big, too small. What do you think are the two big ones? And this one was a safe haven for Quakers. Pennsylvania. I'm going to abbreviate it, this one. What do you think is my next big one? New York. And then what do you think is my small one? The armpit of New York. New Jersey. And then there's this little sliver right here. And this was made by a former general who attacked a lot of Indians. You know, he attacked a lot of Indians, and in his name it's war. Do y'all remember Lord Delaware? Delaware. 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 So for me to know my middle ones, I always tell myself too big. My two big ones are Pennsylvania and New York, and then my two small ones are New Jersey and Delaware. And I always remember there are four colonies in the middle, and then New England, there are four too. And the first colony of New England is what? It is so big that all the Puritans want to go there. It is Massachusetts. Massachusetts is so massive that its name is huge, right? But Massachusetts also takes this area. And many of y'all want to call this Maine, but it's not Maine, it's Massachusetts. Massachusetts is so massive, right? Did a lot of Puritans want to come over here in that great migration? Yes, and eventually they had to cut up Massachusetts and they created a new colony. And it has cut in its name. Connecticut. I can't even get Connecticut in there. But they cut up Massachusetts and created Connecticut. And then they throw out people who were seen as outcasts, meddlesome, to this little island right there. What is that? Rhode Island. And then the last one is New Hampshire. So for New England, I always tell myself a story. The first colony is what? Massachusetts. It was so massive that they had to cut it up and they created what? Connecticut. And then they throw people out to Rhode Island and then they have New Hampshire. So you will never have like be able to locate them. It, there will be a quiz and all you'll have to do is you'll be given a blank sheet of paper you will be given a blank sheet of paper in the near future. And I'll basically tell you to list. And I'll say put South under, and underline it. Put Middle and underline it. Put New England and underline it. And then I will say list the colonies. So for South, what do I have to do? I count from where? Georgia. So I'll put Georgia. I'm OK with that abbreviation. And then I put what? I'm OK with that abbreviation. Then it's what? I'm OK with that abbreviation. Then it's what? And then it's what? I'm not okay with Maryland as an abbreviation. Why do you think I'm not okay with Maryland as an abbreviation? Because Massachusetts. Some of you will put MA here or MB here and then MA over there and I won't know. So you will have to spell that one out. So this is how your quiz will look. You're putting them in order like that. Then I look at the middle and I told myself, too big, too small. So what are my too big? And then what else? New York. And then I tell myself, too small, New Jersey and Delaware. Okay. New England. I start off with what? I'm okay with you abbreviating Massachusetts as that. Mass. Because we know it was so massive that they had to do what? Cut it up and they created what? And then they throw people out to what? And then what's our last one? Do y'all think for a quiz that would be okay? And there's a reason why we do this. And I'll give you a blank sheet of paper. I'll be like, label them out. It probably won't be next time because we have a test. But the reason why we do this is because when we look at this outside information, do I need to know what colonies there are in this area? So when I look at New England, what should I automatically think of? The first one. Which one was it? Massachusetts. 
Massachusetts, and they cut it up and they created what? Connecticut, and then they also did Rhode Island and New Hampshire. Over here, the Chesapeake, does that include Georgia? No. No, South Carolina. Okay, so what can I put? Virginia and Maryland. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about where a prompt is going, what I like to do with people, and we did this, they did it as on their own, but we're gonna do it as a class, just because we need to make up time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go, and this is what I always suggest when you start writing an essay. Don't start writing. I just want you to jot everything down. And because I wanna take you through this process, I already jotted everything down for you. There will be stuff that we could go into greater depth. But now, since we know that this is a differences, we need to start figuring out what is just Chesapeake and what is just New England. So when I abbreviate it on my chart, I'm gonna put New England and Chesapeake. So we're gonna go through this information and y'all are gonna tell me, is it New England, is it Chesapeake, Anglican? That means Church of England. Do y'all think that's Chesapeake or New England? What is the people in New England? Puritan, would they be associated with the Church of New England? No, because they wanted to do what with it? Reform it, so these are the people of the Chesapeake. Bacon's Rebellion. Chesapeake. Good ports. Both. Virginia Company. Chesapeake. Cash Crops. Chesapeake. Congregational Church. Anytime I see congregational, I think of Puritans coming together. So this is what? New England. Disease and short life. Chesapeake. Chesapeake, those mosquitoes, right? Dissenters create new colonies. Can y'all think of the colonies that were dissenters that they created new ones? in these colonial areas that we have up here. New England was entirely dissenters, right? Was there anything a dissenter in the Chesapeake? They were leaving because they were upset. Ah, oh, what else is there? Maryland, right? So this is both, but only for Maryland. But is most of New England dissenters create new colonies? Headright system. Chesapeake. Primary motivation, economics. Chesapeake. Tax supported education. They needed to be able to read their books so they could read the what? Where's that? New England. English. English. That their ethnic makeup is English. Both. Established churches. Both. Okay, so are we seeing similarities? Yes, and we're going to look at these similarities soon. Primary motivation, religious freedom. <coughs> men, women, and families. New England. Primarily men. Chesapeake. Slave coats. Chesapeake. Bible Commonwealth. New England. A majority of indentured servants. Longer lifespan. New England. Majority of slaves. Industry. Both. Halfway covenant. New England. Navigation laws. New England. John Smith and the Gentlemen. Chesapeake. Fishing and shipping. New England. Dylan. Yes. Sorry. First constitution. 
institution. New England. Plantations. Poor land. New England. Trade. Trade. Boat. Self-governing. If you forgot about it, it's called the House of Burgesses. Chesapeake. Chesapeake. John Winthrop. New England. He's the governor. Mayflower Compact. New England. Some religious toleration. Was there any specific region that had religious toleration? Or was there specific colonies? So tell me the colonies that had religious toleration. Rhode Island and what else? Maryland. So this is now what? Both. Town meetings. New England. Tobacco and John Roll. Chesapeake. Chesapeake. Witch trials. College for ministers. They had what in New England? What did they have in the Chesapeake? We had a presentation on William and Mary. So it's now what? Both. Both. Okay, so wow. Have we seen some differences? Have we seen some similarities? Okay, but that's not enough. You need to then go, because now y'all are like, okay, I have to make a thesis about this, but you just know info. And so I'm gonna tell you your next step. Okay, first step is to look at the thesis Look at the question, not formulate a thesis, but write what you know. And then I handed you this. Did y'all get these, the themes? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our themes and we're gonna go back through this info because I promise by looking at the themes, you will be able to then develop a claim which will then help you develop a thesis. So I want us to look at Anglican. What would y'all say that is of the themes? Geography, beliefs, politics, America, the world, identity, peopling, or economy? This is what? Church of England. What would y'all put that? Belief. What would y'all put Bacon's Rebellion at? Bacon's Rebellion. Is that beliefs, politics, identity, geography, economy? It's a political issue. I'm just going to abbreviate political as P-O-L. Is it anything else? It was an identity because there was a specific group of people. Who was the group of people who did this? Indentured servants. They had issues with the upper echelons of their society. Is it another issue? They lacked what and what? They lacked what? Money because they did they have the best land to produce tobacco? No. So if they lacked money and they also lacked the women, what was this another issue of? Economic. Okay, good ports. Good ports. What do y'all think? What categories? Geography. What else do y'all think? It's economic. Virginia Company. This is a group of men who are coming over in this joint stock company to make what? Money. So what would that be? Cash crop. Geography. Congregational church. <laughs> Beliefs. They believed in the church. Did they set up a government based off those beliefs? Mm -hmm. Yes, so what would that also be? Politics. I can't even write it all out. I don't have enough space, but I put P-O-L. Disease and short life. Geography. Because people were dying out. Did they have to import people in to work? So that's also going to affect the economy. Dissenters create new colonies. This is people in movement and migration, so I'm just going to put PPL. It is also, what else? Did they have different beliefs? Did that cause different political systems? Okay. Heterite system. Making people work on the land for a set amount of years. Why?
Why do they need people to work? It's economic. Are they doing this in New England? So it's tied to the what? Do y'all start to see a trend here? What two categories are going together now? Wait, is it the economy affecting the geography or is the geography affecting the economy? Is that now a claim that the geography of the respective region of the Chesapeake is affecting the economic output and the geography of the New England area is affecting their economic output? Is that a claim now? Yes. And that's what AP wants you to get to. And this is why I will suggest that you write your stuff out, you start categorizing, because AP wants to move away from you saying that the New England and the Chesapeake were different because of their geography and their beliefs. They want you to make something broader. So us, is this a little bit broader? Saying that the geography of the Chesapeake and the New England area will affect their economic output. That is now a claim. And this is why, and you're gonna see another one in a second that will start to, a preponderance of information will start to unite those two ideas, okay? So let's move on. Primary motivation economic, what did y'all get? What do y'all think it is? Economic. <laughs> Tax supported education, why did they need kids in school? So they could read the Bible, so what would y'all say that is? <laughs> Beliefs, and so now they're telling people you must pay this tax. And don't tell me it's economic. The government is going to the people saying you will pay this. Politics. English. Identity. Established churches. Beliefs. Primary motivation, religious freedom. Beliefs. And if they're motivated by their religion, what do you think that's going to affect? Are they gonna set up a government to defend this? Okay, so now what's the next category I see? So does the politics affect their beliefs or did their beliefs affect their political development? Is that now a claim? The beliefs of the Puritan people being persecuted back home, not having religious freedom, will cause them to establish an area and their government to be able to defend their freedom to be able to pursue their religious ideas. Is that now a claim? Is that something I could use in my thesis? Okay, we're gonna keep on going and we're gonna see. Primarily men, women, and families. Identity. Primarily men. Slave coats. It's, yeah, the geog we didn't have any in New England, right? Because it was all rocky and glaciated. So the geography. So what else do you think that goes with that? And then also politics. Bible Commonwealth. They said we're coming to the new world to establish a, a government by the people ruled by the Bible. Beliefs, Beliefs with what else? <coughs> Majority of indentured servants. Identity. What else is this? We need the servants to come over to work on the land. Geography, which also affects what? Longer lifespan. They live longer. The geography helped with this, right? Does that affect the identity? A majority of slaves. Okay, we know it's because of the geography. What else are we gonna put? Economic. And we could also put identity. Industry. Industry. It's what the areas produce. Geography. Partial membership to those who haven't been in the church, he was in the baptism but not communion. Beliefs. Beliefs. But they make this law, so it's also politics. Navigation laws. Politics. It's forcing them to trade only with England. Economic. John Smith and the gentleman. 
identity. They're at the top of their society. Well, how did they get to the top of their society? They control the economy because they own what? The lands of geography. Fishing and shipping. they get those fish. First constitution. Politics. Politics. Plantations. Geography and the economy. Poor land. Geography. Does that affect their economic output? So they look to the ocean. Trade. It's economic. Is it anything else? Self-governing. <coughs> it is political, but how do they decide in both areas who gets to self-govern? Their well, is it their beliefs, right? In New England, who gets to vote? Who gets to self-govern? You have to be what? Elect. In the South, who gets to govern? The rich, so is that their belief? The people who are at the top, okay? So beliefs and identity. Shipbuilding. Oh. Economy. But what must I have around me so I can build these ships? Sure. I need to have that lumber. First elected assembly. Politics. John Winthrop. He's the governor, so what would that be? But who, what, whose laws is he enforcing? So then that would be what? Mayflower Compact. They're agreeing to a government by the rule of the majority of men. But these men are what? Puritan. Okay. Some religious toleration. Beliefs. Do they establish this in their government? Politics. Town meetings. John Rolfe and tobacco. Economic. Geography. Witch trials. Political. Do they also deal with the beliefs? Colleges for ministers. Beliefs. Okay, looking at this now, do I see categories that go together? And so I'll tell you, when getting ready for the AP test and you're writing, I always tell my students, write down everything you know about it. Because now when I look at John Rolfe and tobacco, does that tell me a little bit more? I could be like, oh, yes, this led to the head rhyme system. They were trying to get here for gold, but they weren't successful. Can I now think of other stuff? And then I tell you to categorize it because now have we come to some claims? What are some of these claims I could make? What are some of these claims? It's where my categories come together. What are some of my categories that come together that help me make claims? The economic, wait, is it the economy and the geography or the it's geography? The okay, so the <coughs> geography of the New England and the Chesapeake area will affect the economic development of that region. Is that now a claim? Yes. Can then I bring this into my thesis? The next one, what was another big one that we saw lumped together? The beliefs, the beliefs of the Puritans who settled in the area and the beliefs of the men who settled in the Chesapeake area. Those ideas will help shape and develop the political systems that they will live under. Is that now a claim? Now can I take these two claims and then can I create a thesis? Yes, and so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do that Venn diagram together and we're gonna realize that there's some more things that we can do before we get to writing. Are y'all okay? Yes? Okay. And usually we do this right before the test because it's a good review of stuff. Right now, you should have this chart, and what we're going to do is we're going to fill it out together, 
and we're going to understand how do we do our paragraph development. And we're going to take this info right here and be able to fill it in here. So I'm going to look at my chart. Okay, I just want to look for stuff for geography and economy. Yes? I didn't get one. I'm sorry, they should have been passed back. She was just collecting them all. She was going to fill it all, all for y'all. <laughs> okay, we're going to look through this chart and we're going to look down. What is the stuff that I should put for geography? Should I put Bacon's Rebellion there on geography? Did the geography affect Bacon's Rebellion? Yeah, he was out on the frontier and that means he was close to who? The Indians. So can I put it over here, Bacon's Rebellion? Ports. I need to put it where? The similarities. Virginia Company, did the geography affect that company and where they landed? Yes, they couldn't find the gold. Was that something geographical? Did that affect their economic development when they couldn't find it? Yeah, so I'm going to put Virginia Company over here. Congregational church, no. Disease in short life, yes. Because as people die, do they need to import new labor? Dissenters, no. And then I have head rights. And then I have primary motivation. Economic. Okay, that's all in that first row, right? Now I'm going to go to the middle row. Wait, do I see that one side more heavily weighted on the geography and the economy? Does that tell me a lot about their development, and does that lead to further stuff in my claim? Okay, so now let's look down the middle one. First constitution of shipping. Where do I put that? The shipbuilding. Over here. And then I have John Smith. Navigation laws over here. Industry for both. Majority of slaves. Longer lifespans. Slave codes. Looking at this, is there one colony that is more focused on the geography and the economy than the other? <laughs> yes. Is that, can that I bring that into my argument now? These people over here, they were focused more on what? Religion. Yes, they did develop an economy because of the calling, right? But which one was more geared towards it being successful economically? Is that an argument now? Okay, so let's look at the last column. Plantations. Okay, over here. And we have poor land. And then we have trade in the middle. Voting. I've gotten lost on my list. Uh, tobacco. Okay, looking at this. Do I have an although, however? Although both regions were established to trade with the motherland, right? They developed industries, they had good ports. However, their geography will develop their economic output. Is that although, however? Yes. And do you see how the Venn diagram leads you to that? So now I want us to make our claim over here on the side. We're gonna write out our claim. And this claim is gonna help us write our thesis. What are we gonna say? The New England and the Chesapeake areas, right? Right? What? Had different what? Had different what? Geographies that led to different economic development Would that be like my intro sentence? 
to the paragraph. And then I could go to, although they both had trade with England, they developed industries and had good ports, the geography will affect their economic output. Can I also make another argument that one, one colony is more agriculturally based and the other one is more manufacture based, right? Or by the ocean based. Do I have evidence here now? If I were to then go in a paragraph, can I set this up? Can I just go, Bacon's Rebellion happened because of this, Virginia Company happened, they had cash crops, and a lot of this cash crops was because disease and short life, they develop a headright. Is that like good? Is that good, or is that just a laundry list? So should I start ranking what I talk about first? So I wanna talk about the geography affecting the what? So what should I pull out? If I'm making that claim, I can't just go through this list, Bacon's Rebellion happened, Virginia Company, they came here as a joint stock company, I can't go down this list. So if I'm trying to argue that the geography affected the economy, what should I pull out? The disease and the short life? Well, led to the head right system being developed, right? So we can have people who come over to work. What else am I missing here? Is there other outside information I could put here? They have fertile land, right? Mm -hmm. And now this head right system is gonna lead to what? When you pay for the passage of a person, you get what? Indentured servants, right? Is there something on here on indentured servants? Can I start with, is, did we even write indentured servants? Mm -hmm. No, we forgot to write them. Can I start chunking some of this stuff together? Yes, so we saw that we did not have, what up here, fertile soil, right, to talk about the geography. Over here, is there something we're lacking of the geography to talk about? What's some other information we can put here? Rocky and what else? Glacial. And you see that you're not gonna be just limited to what's here, you're probably gonna have to add stuff in. Can I talk about the Puritan hard work ethic to make it this area a Garden of Eden and that they all needed to find their calling? That's additional information, okay? How do y'all feel about this category? We're gonna flip and we're gonna go to the back category. Y'all see where it says beliefs and politics? So this one is New England. This one is similarities. Now I want you all to go down the list and tell me what I need to put here. I showed you all how to do this, now you all help me. We're going through our list. Okay. Tax supported education, I'm gonna put it over here. What else do I need to put in for the first column? Can you put in congregational? What goes in my middle? Established church. Is there anything else I'm missing on that first column? No? Okay, let's go to the middle column now. What do I need to put in? What was that? Halfway covenant. <coughs> I'm also going to put a first constitution because, again, the people who were making it were religiously driven. I have Bible Commonwealth. Is that on this row or on the next row? No, it's on this one. I don't know where is that. I feel I missed that. Okay, let's look at the third row. What else do we need to put in here? Self 
self-governing? Where do I put that? In the middle. Of the first elected assembly. both, right? But is it all of New England and all of, you know, so I'm going to put Rhode Island and Maryland. And then which trial is this? Is there on this side, is there a colony that is more driven by their beliefs? Yeah, right? So, um, can I make a claim over here? <coughs> what, what affected what? The beliefs of the settlers who came here will affect their what? Their political institutions, right? So, the settlers of the Chesapeake and New England area beliefs will affect the political developments or institutions of their region. Can then I now expand on this, the settlers of their areas? Can I expand on this within the paragraph now? Can I set up an although, however? Yes, I could say although they were both self-governing, um, the people of these areas will determine who has self-government. Although they both had established churches, will they be different? Although that they, uh, no, can I do although for both religious scholars? No, because that's an anomaly, okay? Was there one side that was more belief-driven? Yes. Okay, so what I want us to now focus is on, on identity. Okay, what have we identified as the identity piece? What are some things I could put from the first column? English. Where do I put English? What else in that first column? We have bacon for bones. We just knew that was our denture service. What else do we have in that first column? English. Okay, we didn't have much. Second column. John Smith and the gentleman. Okay, what else? Longer lifespan. Is there anything else in the middle that's identity? Let's look on our last column. We have self-governing. <coughs> what else? Is there anything else in that last category? Okay. Can I also bring in my social pyramids here? Would that be identity? Who did they put at the top of this social pyramid in the Chesapeake? The gentleman. And then we know it's the government. And then we know it's the farmer. And then we know it's the indentured servant. And then who's at the bottom? The slave, right? Is this something further about how they had a social makeup? Mm -hmm. 
okay, over here in this identity, who did they put at the top? The minister, and then it was the governor, and then it was the clergy, and then it was the elect, and then it was the non-elect, and then what? Non-Peterson. Did their beliefs affect this social pyramid? Yes. Yes. So can I make another claim? The beliefs of the people will affect the social development or their social hierarchy. So we hear, what did they believe was more important in the New England area? In the New England area, their, the church was important. And the more religious were where? At the top of the hierarchy, and the least religious were where? Over here in the Chesapeake, what did they deem more important? Wealth and land. So the most wealthy meant that they had the most land, and if you were on the bottom of the social pyramid, that means you were tending the land, right? So did there was their identity? Did it affect their social hierarchy of their area? So can we make another claim? The settlers and their beliefs will affect social hierarchies of each region. So even if I look at this, I can say, although they were both ancient English and self-governing, their identity, will it affect their social hierarchy? Also, does this social hierarchy affect their politics? Does this social hierarchy affect who is politically in charge of a colony? Does this social hierarchy cause strife amongst the people? Yes. yes. Who's going to have strife over here in this pyramid? Who's going to clash with each other? The non-elect with the elect. And even the elect, aren't they clashing with their ministers? Over here in this social pyramid, who's going to clash with who? The indentured servants with who? The government and the... Are y'all now making it more complex? Okay, the last thing we have to do is we have to go back to the front side. Are y'all seeing how this makes our claims? Because I don't know how easy it was for you to come up with a thesis, but I, I don't know if y'all did a free response last year, but this is how I tell my students to be able to come around. Put the information, categorize that, that then to help you make your, uh, your claims. Let's go to this front side. This one is motivation for migration. Where did this motivation have to occur? Did it occur here in the colonies, or did it occur before? before. Where were they before? <clears throat> so this will then become our contextualization. Do y'all remember that word from last year? <laughs> contextualization is the history prior. And so we can have a separate paragraph for it. We can put it in our intro, but let's talk about it. Why were people from New England? What happened prior in England to cause them to want to come over to the New World? Protestant Reformation. Okay, Protestant Reformation. What about it? What was it? What were they upset about? No reform. Lack of reform, right? What else happened back in England that caused them and motivated them to come to the new world. We had it on our review quiz. What was happening to them? Persecution. Charles the first persecution of Puritans. Can I go into ideas of the Protestant Reformation, like the lack of them? getting rid of the Catholic um, ideas, um, the dam sitting with the saved, the, that's further detail, right? So would I get credit just saying that they came over because of the, the lack of reform from the Protestant Reformation? No, that's just a phrase. Do I need to explain it out? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the Chesapeake. Why were they coming over? What was going on? What was going on back in England that would encourage these men here? Mm -hmm. In closing of land, there's other stuff. The law of primogen. Sorry, this is one of those words I have to count out. Genitor. What else? Joint stock companies. Over. 
per population. Right. Do they look different now? But what do they both see the new world as? There's our similarity. Although they both have different motivations for migration, however, they look to the new world as a place of opportunity, right? Back home, they were being affected. Can y'all now put this in? If you wanted to make a paragraph just on contextualization, do y'all have stuff to contextualize? Because this is prior to the period, um, it allows for that. So let me go through this last thing. I don't think I handed this out. Is I want us to look at the rubric now for this essay. How do y'all feel now? Does it seem more doable? Yes. Okay. We still have stuff to work on Wednesday. We still have stuff to work on Friday over this. So I'm not ready just to release you and be like, go and write. We still have stuff to do. Okay. And so what I want us to look at now is how do we feel with this rubric? Now that, that we've worked through this essay, different from each other. Is that now a claim? Because what did I do to my categories? I combined them and I weaved them together and now am I making claims? How do y'all feel about this first point? Do y'all got it? Y'all just need to figure out where you want to go and we'll talk more about that on Wednesday. Contextualization describes the broader historical context relevant to the prompt. And to earn this one, we can only do the process that occurred before because I haven't talked about the after, all right? So do y'all have information that you could do before that you could weave into your essay? Now, can I just say Protestant Reformation and get the credit? It says right here, this is not awarded for a mere phrase or reference. So do I have to explain it out now? Now let's look at the next part, evidence. Do we have specific examples of evidence relevant to the prompt? Yes, we do, right? But do we have to explain them out, right? I can't just say disease in short life led to the head right system, right? I would have to explain why the disease in the short life and the attacks by the mosquitoes and that these men were not able to tend to their own crop led to the head right system, right? Can now I support an argument by making these claims? Can I support an argument with outside information using examples? So for examples, do I still need to explain it out? Lastly, use as a historical reason. What do you think we're using? Are we using comparisons, causations, or change over time? We're using comparisons. So I want us to look at what it says. Explains both the similarity and difference. So if you were just to do differences, will you get the credit? Do we have enough similarities on this to be able to get the point? I could say, although both are self-governing, However, the people and their beliefs of this area will develop the political institutions. Is that now addressing the similarity and the difference? Do y'all have enough information on that chart now to be able to address both? Okay, the last thing is demonstrate a complex understanding. So, I don't know, have y'all gotten through, um, oh, I don't wanna spoil it for y'all. Have y'all gotten through the crucible? You're about to finish. So it's this witch trial, right? And so if y'all were to be complex in English, is there another time in history where we had immense tribulation where people were questioning groups of people and that there was like strife that we're trying to find, it's not a witch hunt, but like people who were 
harming our society. Do y'all know of a time in the 1950s where we're trying to find communists that had infiltrated our government? The Red Scare. The Red Scare. Is that a connection? Is that now complex? Okay, and that's how y'all could do, oh, y'all are just stealing something you could do in your essay. But that's complex, right? I'm relating one time period to another. So is there, is there complexity that I could then focus that on, okay? And so eventually that's something that comes that is the hardest point to award. And like I graded this summer, like 92 hours for AP, and it, that was often the hardest point for me to award because they would have to explain it out and those similarities and how it was done. Okay, overall, 